Welcome to Energy Air Force. You will soon get your first taste of battle. The enemy is formidable and we are unstable. Use your best judgment and complete your mission. Your call sign will be Gargoyle. That's all. Make us proud. ようこそエナジーエアホースへ諸君はこれより実戦に投入される敵兵力は強大であり戦況は刻一刻と変化する状況を冷静に判断し任務に当たってほしい諸君のコールサインはガーゴイエナジーエアホースとしての誇りを見せる以上だ幸運を祈る The conformal fuel tank demonstration was a short notice, quick reaction program to demonstrate the handling qualities and basic performance of the F-16 aircraft with configuration representative conformal fuel tanks attached as part of the Israeli Peace Marble 5 program proposal. To help determine if this candidate was worth pursuing, LMTAS proposed two sorties to the Israeli government which they accepted. The Israelis sent a pilot and an engineer to the 416th FLTS to fly aircraft 1120, configured with representative empty conformal fuel tanks to determine if there were any basic degradations in aircraft performance or handling quality due to the addition of the tank. The support required of the 416th was to ensure all aircraft mod paperwork was completed, all safety planning completed, and all security issues regarding the Israeli national pilot and engineer were accounted for. All business proposals, mod and maintenance paperwork, and safety planning were completed in the two weeks prior to testing. In addition to the Israeli flights, the Air Force had the opportunity to fly two sorties of their own on the CFT-configured aircraft for their own limited evaluation. All demonstration objectives were met, and the aircraft was demodded in time to support subsequent test programs. The basic performance and handling qualities of the aircraft was not noticeably degraded, and the Israeli pilot was quite pleased with the overall performance of the aircraft with the CFTs. The Air Force opinion was quite positive once you got past the aesthetic drawbacks of attaching these tanks to our otherwise perfect aircraft. This demonstration was a landmark flight test program in that it, one, demonstrated the quick response capability of the CTF to satisfy short notice requirements, Two, to work with the contractor in helping to bring more business to the CTF in new and innovative ways. And three, the professionalism and effectiveness of the members of the F-16 Combined Test Force and their ability to get the job done. The Digital Terrain System Night Integrated Systems Evaluations focused on the military utility of DTS when used with NVGs at night. Missions included low-level flight, intercepts, and bomb drops. DTS enhanced pilot situational awareness, reducing the work and load, allowing him greater focus on the threats and or mission. The database terrain queuing system provided a significant benefit through the terrain queue presented into the HUD, commanding low-level flight. The missions, flown with test pilots from the 422nd Test and Evaluation Squadron from Nellis Air Force Base, concluded the DTC development program, and DTS is now being integrated into the major F-16 OFP programs. Although there are some limitations to DTS, it has the potential to significantly increase the F-16's lethality. The pod-mounted seeker is an AFFTC test asset that simulates a threat seeker and will be used to evaluate end-game countermeasures versus various surface-to-air missiles. The F-16 has been designated as the host platform. The PMSP will be compatible with Block 40T 5.2 and Block 50T 4 Plus core avionics. The 416th recently completed Seek Eagle certification of the IHOC pod. The 416th is scheduled to conduct additional Seek Eagle testing of the SADS pod in the January 99 time frame. PMSP testing is scheduled to begin in late 1999. 
On June 30th, the 416th Flight Test Squadron, using aircraft 557, conducted a live launch of the AIM-120B AMRAAM. This was the first AMRAAM live launch from an F-16, which was staged from the Air Force Flight Test Center. Baseline certification of 600-gallon tanks on F-16 Block 5052 Harm and Maverick configuration is being tested to extend loiter times in support of the suppression of enemy air defenses missions. Under the direction of a Sikh Eagle request, a limited envelope was defined for the Harm and Maverick configuration. ACC and Headquarters HACAF have determined that this limited envelope is insufficient to meet operational needs. ACC has now issued a new request for certification of the 600-gallon tanks involving multiple configurations. Efforts on this are several years away. In the interim, that office has directed the F-16 SPO to determine the full envelope of the Harm and Maverick configuration by the end of 1998. This is required to determine the need to continue acquisition of the tank. The current testing defines the structural loads flight test requirements necessary for the SEED 600-gallon tank loadings on the Block 5052 airplane. The Ejector Nozzle Air Nacelle Inlet Program performed flight testing in mid-September to evaluate the preliminary design of the inlet. The testing consisted of four flights to collect data verifying the engine bay airflow model with the new inlet throughout the flight envelope and evaluate the effect of the new inlet on 370-gallon fuel tank separation. Two fuel tanks were dropped at the following conditions. 0.85 Mach at 5,000 feet MSL with three Mark 82s loaded on Tur 9A at stations 3 and 7 and 0.9 Mach at 5,000 feet MSL with GBU-10 at stations 3 and 7. All testing was successfully completed and the two tank separations were clean, showing normal separation characteristics. The Ejector Nozzle Air Nacelle Inlet Program performed flight testing in mid-September to evaluate the preliminary design of the inlet. The testing consisted of four flights to collect data verifying the engine bay airflow model with the new inlet throughout the flight envelope and evaluate the effect of the new inlet on 370-gallon fuel tank separation. Two fuel tanks were dropped at the following conditions. 0.85 Mach at 5,000 feet MSL with three Mark 82s loaded on Tur 9A at stations 3 and 7 and 0.9 Mach at 5,000 feet MSL with GBU-10 at stations 3 and 7. All testing was successfully completed and the two tank separations were clean, showing normal separation characteristics. The overall test objective of Auto GCAS is to demonstrate that the system will have a significant impact on Class A and B mishaps under the categories of spatial disorientation, G-induced loss of consciousness, and gear-up landings, in addition to identifying any areas where the Auto GCAS could impede the pilot from performing any mission role. The Auto GCAS test is being conducted by the 416th Flight Test Squadron at the request of the Advanced Development Program Office at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The Air Force Flight Test Center is the responsible test organization in participation with the Air Force Research Laboratory and the Swedish Air Force. The system being tested is a full envelope automatic ground collision avoidance system. When active, this system monitors aircraft's state and ground proximity for impending penetration of a pilot-selected floor altitude or distance to the ground. If a penetration is determined, a fly-up is commanded and the autopilot executes an automatic recovery. When there is an elevation that will cause ground proximity, a time to fly up, called TUP, is calculated and displayed and is followed by an automatic fly-up when flight conditions are not corrected. Fly up, fly up. TUP is displayed on the HUD using Chevron cues that are presented between 0 and 5 seconds prior to predicted fly-up. 
Additionally, a brake X visual warning is provided in the multifunction display and aural warnings are provided to the pilot when the predicted penetration point is reached. Six, five, Testing completed so far includes 63% of planned flying hours, 65% of priority one test points, and 38% of priority two test points at air speeds of 200 knots to 1.05 Mach and up to 80 degree dive angles. Test results so far have proven the aircraft response model is exceptionally accurate. Pilots from the 416th honed their weapons delivery skills with a series of live AGAM-65 Maverick missile launches. And the first live AMRAM West Coast launch was followed by the second and third live launches. <laughs> 